Hello everyone, this is Alex, the driving instructor from Sensen Driving School. In today's video, we'll be talking about different left turns in the Point Grey area. So before we get started with the video, generally I get booked up at least two months in advance. Yes, that's weekdays and weekends. So please reach out to me as early as possible if you would like lessons from me. The best way to contact me is through text and I will reply as soon as I can. I will always give priority bookings to students who are subscribers to this channel. Thanks. So left turns at traffic lights. Uh, signal well in advance, three to five car lengths before the intersection. If red light, then of course full stop before the first white line. If green light, roll out into the intersection with your shoulders lining up with the third line. Keep your steering wheel straight. Watch for oncoming cars, pedestrians on the left, and traffic lights. When there's a safe gap, do a left shoulder check before you turn. So here's an example of a picture so just to see where you should be placing yourself on that third line. And another picture here just to show you when you're lining up where you go to the closest lane here when you turn left. When you're sitting on the third line waiting for a safe gap in traffic, make sure you're keeping your eyes on the three main things. Oncoming traffic, pedestrians crossing the street parallel to you on the left, and the traffic light changing from green to yellow to red. Of course, there are going to be questions of what do I do when the light turns yellow? What do I do when I'm car number two waiting to turn left? When I'm car number one, how far out do I roll to position myself to turn? What is considered a safe gap? What happens when I have an advanced green arrow? Let's try to answer some of those questions for you. The following are some examples of left turns I did while I was driving in the Point Grey area. Okay, example number one. So we're making a left turn, we're on McDonald Street, we're making a left turn onto Alamon Avenue. So of course it's red light, so I'm stopping. Okay, the light turned green, so I'm inching forward and I'm placing myself on the third line. Again, keeping your steering wheel straight, watching for oncoming traffic, pedestrians crossing the street, and the traffic light. So it looks like this is the last vehicle we're waiting for. Left shoulder check, hand over hand, and letting the wheels spin back. Okay, now we're just going from small street to small street here. This one's tricky because of the uphill and the curve. And then there's a big bush on the left obstructing your view, so just make sure you're rolling up until you can see before turning. And there's that left shoulder check before turning. Example number three here. So we are on West 16th and we'll be turning left onto Arbutus. So the light was green already. So I inched forward, putting myself on the third line, keeping the steering wheel straight. Okay, so here my view was very obstructed, so I waited for the light to change to yellow and then I needed to exit the intersection with a sense of urgency there. This one, Arbutus Street turning left onto West 6th Avenue. So yes, there's a crosswalk here, but there were no pedestrians and I did not have the stop sign, so I proceeded because I had right of way. Okay, example number five. We're going left at the traffic circle, so I signal left, shoulder check right. 
I enter on the right, looking left and right before I enter. The optimum turning speed here, I recommend 15 to 20 in the traffic circle. Example number six. Okay, so we're on West Broadway and we're going to turn left onto McDonald Street. So there was a designated left turn lane. So I signaled left, shoulder check left, and I got in here. And it's a red light right now, so of course we wait. So when you go into a designated left turn lane like this, you just keep the left turn signal on because you have to turn left. So we want to leave the left turn signal on. Uh, we are car number two right now. So of course we wait behind the first white line until it's safe for us to roll forward. But of course the light changed, so I decided it was unsafe to proceed forward. So I am now waiting for the next green light. Very busy intersection. So when we're car number two waiting, when we were car number two waiting, we were waiting behind the first white line. So this is in case the light changes, you won't be stuck on top of the crosswalk. So you can see here, I did that properly, so then I'm not sitting on top of the crosswalk and annoying pedestrians. And of course it'd be a violation. Okay, so it turns out I received a green arrow, so I have right of way, so I proceeded to turn. Example number seven, left turn at a boulevard. So only one car per direction can occupy the middle and will be turning left behind each other. If you're car number two, then of course you will wait behind the first white line for your turn. So here's a picture of how it'll look like. Bird's eye view. Okay, so I'm on McDonald Street turning left onto King Edward Avenue. And of course, red light, so we full stop. So make sure you use this time at the red light to scan to see if there's any oncoming vehicles, any potential pedestrians going to cross the street. So here we go, we're inching forward going into the middle between the boulevard, still keeping the steering wheel straight. So I'm watching for pedestrians to cross the street here, and there were some so of course I waited. Looking for oncoming traffic, watching for pedestrians watching the traffic light. So we have this last vehicle, did that left shoulder check and turn. And of course we're turning into the closest lane. Okay, example number eight, again, left turn at a boulevard. Only one car per direction can occupy the middle and will be turning left behind each other. If you're car number two, then of course you wait behind the first white line for your turn. West King Edward turning left onto Valley Drive. Okay, going into the middle of the boulevard. So there were oncoming vehicles, so I used that opportunity to straighten out my wheel so I don't lose track of it. Waited for those cars to come, and when it was safe, I proceeded. General guideline for determining a safe gap to turn. When the oncoming car is one city block away, it is a safe gap for you to turn. When the car is half a block away, it isn't safe and you should wait. When the oncoming car is three quarters of a block away, 
as long as you don't hesitate, it is still a safe gap to turn. Okay, let's be real. Uh, left turns are really scary. Make sure to work with your supervisor slash instructor to get better and more confident with these turns. Okay, that's it for now. Please subscribe, like this video, and comment below. And let me know what you would like to see more from this channel. Thanks for watching. Bye now.